the good things about the teachings of the Buddha is that they're quite simple and we, we don't always have to um, do much intellectual scholastic studies we can just use simple teachings for our practice and uh, use them directly and be creative with them in in uh, adding <coughs> the meaning in the particulars to our situation if anything that you're practicing fits in with <coughs> the four noble truths that means leads to you understanding what suffering is and uh, the cause of suffering then it should be all right there's no no doubt that that's good practice and if anything uh, is in line with the three characteristics like anichang impermanence dukkhang suffering and anatta non-self then uh, it's very good for practice and uh, there's no doubt that it's the right right thing to do especially <clears throat> the three characteristics like uh, in the forest tradition there's a lot of talk about these and four noble truths as well of course and, uh, you got Ajahn Chah talking about my nay everything is not sure you just simply simply keep the not sure mind all through the day and uh, with your attitudes with your thoughts coming up <clears throat> not to believe into them not to kind of like uh, spin on with something that's actually changing anyway just um, see the fleeting and uh, transient nature and don't invest too much effort into following them it's excellent meditation practice and uh, or like on a bigger level <coughs> if the the mind is too subtle and you don't have the the right angle on how to catch yourself thinking and uh, you know, get into habits without noticing it or so <coughs> you can di direct your attention to the body and literally instruct your mind through contemplating the body about the impermanence in the body for example um, just interesting uh, like some of the images that we carry around our, our body um, everybody for example knows quite well how his hands look so um, one can just simply contemplate these things and think these these things are not the way I usually perceive them and I look at them how they how they change how they uh, how they feel and uh, and con contemplate something that's close to your your direct experience and uh, use uh, the simple teachings in addition with that and uh, and then the mind naturally is in the Dhamma, is in the teachings of the Buddha, is not somewhere outside and whenever something else comes up you go back to something simple and, um, <coughs> and uh, elaborate on it and then uh, the mind has got something to do. I, I just came across some teachings that Ajahn Jandi had given quite a while ago to a group of us visiting him at a I think Boy Scouts Jamboree in 2003 or so and it was all in Thai and uh, he actually wanted it to be translated into English but like uh, for the flow of it like uh, we had it all done in Thai and I actually later translated part of it and I was just thinking about it because um, it's such an obvious thing but like he was talking about um, reflecting on the Dhamma, Dhamma Vichaya you can call it like with the Pali if you like and Dhamma Vichaya sounds like something special but like it's actually meaning uh, that you incline your mind back to the Dhamma all the time say for example when you're walking John Krom, say as soon as you find yourself speculating about the future which is uncertain or like you go back to the past which is like um, something that you know already and there's no need to revisit it and uh, so more or less like then you just go back to something very simple some teachings that has impressed you or like that that you find applicable in and then you dwell on that and you expand on it and you look at your especially the interface between the physical world what you're doing what you're feeling in your body and how how the whole sense of movement is happening 
with this Dhamma teaching, for example, impermanence. You can walk John Crom and contemplate each step and how the things are constantly in movement, literally because one is walking. But um, even you know, like even that, like one tends to think I'm just always doing the same. I'm walking up and down, but actually each step is very different, and you can um, really find ways of looking at what's happening. And then, um, and then the mind isn't back to the past or isn't in the future. I just go back and uh, you can also use a um, reminder for yourself, like in saying it's impermanent. And just drop the stuff that, um, that one wants, ho wants to hold on and hold on to something that is directly with, uh, in touch with your experience. And um, it can be um, the touching of your feet on the ground, for example. It can be um, the... Gen a simple, a simple touch of the of the breeze on your on your skin while you're walking. The mind gets quite refined. You can contemplate lots of things that actually, with the unsharpened awareness, they they don't come to one's attention. But when one uh, zooms into um, the experience at a particular point, and then then enlarge it, it is, enlarges it from there and then the mind has got a lot of uh, ways to be in the Dhamma, in the teachings and not go all over the place and uh, be be well focused and and then and it's naturally cooling oneself down and uh, the need for um, activity, the restlessness or so actually settles after some time Sometimes, in, say for a meditation session, especially if you if you're now arranging your time freely, sometimes there's doubts about what should I do now? Should I sit or should I walk? And then sometimes one wastes a lot of time thinking I should rather sit now. I'm gonna walk first, but I got I gotta sit, or the other way around. You know, I gotta sit still, but actually I need to walk or whatnot. You know, it's just some completely nonsensical what we're doing. I can like in a we're sabotaging our own effort, so finding alternatives that aren't really kind of like anything great at all, like it's just like um, not being able to do what one's doing and uh, always in the future, always comparing, always doing something else and um, forgetting that um, whatever things that are coming, you know, they're worthy of just dwelling on them, just being there and being mindful, not to get carried away with with things that are changing anyway, say. Uh, it's just terrible if one has one of those uh, days where one's restless. So um, it may well come up after having had quite a bit of activity in the Sangha and then and then now you got all the free time of the world so you can't blame it on the on the place, you can't blame it on the schedule, you can't blame it on the Ajahn, it's all up to you so you got all the choices. And yet it doesn't work. The mind still goes here and there. So, so then give it something to think, um, which is in the Dhamma. For some people, maybe um, the impermanence is the right thing uh, to think about. Uh, you think about um, a bit broader than your present day experience. You think about death. Like, uh, say, for example, you think what the heck the difference is between a walking, alive body and a dead body. If you can solve that koan, uh, you're pretty, pretty gang, I think. Uh, you can just kind of dwell on it and look at it, and uh, you know, you don't know much about death. You haven't experienced it yet. None of us has, <laughs> I bet. And so, even near-death experiments, they say it's all, all just in the brain. It's just kind of all kind of like illusion anyway. So, so nobody really has experienced death. But like we've got all these kind of anticipations or accesses to, to it. So there's tons of playground for a mind that wants to think. Instead of going to the near future, you go to the very, very distant future. I, imagine the last chunk of, of life. Like Some of us have seen people dying or almost dying. And, and um, what I find important is always to bridge one's own physical, tangible experience with what one is contemplating. So if you're contemplating death, then contemplate yourself on the tra transition of death and contemplate yourself in a, in a way where, you know, like, um, you, you know the expression of a face of, of somebody who's dead. We've seen a lot of 
um, corpses in the monastery, <coughs> at the cremations, for example, and you you can tell that there's no life force in the in the face of a death dead person, and so you can uh, maybe this is better for sitting, but some people can do it while while walking as well. Just sit down and just imagine your face, and just ima imagine that quality jump from alive and fresh and there to not there anymore. And uh, you can do that like. Uh, these are things that uh, that um, everybody has to find out or try. Just giving you some of my ideas. But if there's anything that makes sense, and uh, it can be also a, quite an odd idea, as long as it has to do with impermanence, suffering, or non-self, it's all right, and uh, it's in the Dhamma, and it's not a waste of time. And uh, there's some marvelous experiences that one can make through things that one thought one knew already by just like applying oneself over and over, just going again to the same thing and just going in in there again, looking at it from the inside out, from the outside in, round about, perpetual change constantly, looking here, there, everything close to the edge, down by the corner, everywhere, look everywhere where you can and see see things.